All right, let me make sure the audio is on correctly here. This is gonna be a live update. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of update and also share some nature journal pages. That's one of the nature pages right now, but I am currently at La Selva Biological Station. Luckily they have an air conditioned library because right now it's like 100% humidity and super hot just outside. Um, I'm gonna give some updates because I did some updates on my Instagram about my lost passport situation. Um, hold on one second, need to close that. Um, okay, so um, let me know if you have any questions about what's been going on. Um, for me, I did, right before getting to this paradise for nature journaling, I did lose my passport and my money pouch with um, all of the most important things, uh, you know, for traveling. Um, but I'm still, um, you know, figuring things out. And luckily, over the weekend, I've been in a spot where, um, you know, I can't really do anything about the passport until Monday. So I'm just trying to um, get some nature journaling in and do what was my original plan. So I'm going to shift uh, cameras here so you can see uh, my page better. Uh, let me know if you have any questions um, in the chat. And here we go. Uh, so here you can see some of the pages that I've been doing. So this is an amazing place. It's called La Selva. It's a biological station. So much research has been done here. It has been um, an influential place on a lot of um, famous scientists. Um, and just the day that um, I got here, I it's a long story, but I basically lost my passport and my entire money pouch um, on the bus. I spent the whole first day um, trying to find it, do everything I can, talking to the police, um, talking to all, all of the neighbors, going to the bus station. Um, calling the bus terminal, calling the bus driver, doing all of that, um, and stressing out a little bit. Um, and I actually didn't even have food to buy uh, dinner the first night that I was here at this um, science field station. Luckily, I had paid with my card um, for the, the reservation so I could stay here. Once I got all of that taken care of and I could figure out what I was going to, uh, you know, what were the steps that I needed to take to deal with that logistical stuff, then I was able to actually focus on nature journaling. So right here, you can see uh, one of my pages um, on the, the, the first day. There's these amazing great green macaws. So um, if you think parrots are pretty or scarlet macaws are, are pretty impressive, these right here are probably one of the most impressive macaws, um, if not the most impressive. So tons of those every single day here. Um, this was on a guided hike, so I was nature journaling with muggles, but doing my Best. There's tons of these amazing guans, um, which are um, really, really cool birds. So I've managed to kind of uh, focus on the nature journaling part and not worry too much about uh, the stressfulness of the whole passport situation. And people have been reaching out. I want to thank everybody who's been helping. Some people have uh, offered me all kinds of things to help me out. And I just wanted to, uh, to say that it is possible to... Uh, some people have been sending me money over PayPal, which I can't actually take out in Costa Rica, but eventually once I can get my bank stuff figured out, I will be able to use that. So if you want to help me out that way, um, even a small amount is, is helpful because as you probably know, this is my job and this is um, nature journaling is my job. And this, this year has been, uh, you know, a lot of sacrifices to, um, you know, just keep doing what I'm doing, the Nature Journal show and all of that, and also to, um, you know, help spread nature journaling around the world. So, you know, people have been saying, oh, losing your passport and all of that, that must be, that must be so stressful. Well, the thing is, is that, that uh, it is, of course, but also I'm not on vac vacation. I'm not trying to relax. I'm trying to save the world with nature journaling. And so, you know, dealing with this problem is any of the other obstacles that I've faced so far and it's this is my work so um you know like obviously it's not ideal but for the amount of traveling that i've been doing and have done over my life that you know losing my passport one time is like not really uh you know it's not really that surprising that that should happen um so let's go look into these birds uh and, and other nature journal pages here a little bit more and then i'm going to show you a little bit of uh, nature journaling homework so um, right here, you can see this is a woodpecker. Um, this was a lifer bird for me, so really exciting. I have been doing, um, using uh, apps for uh, birding now, which I used to make fun of, but I think it's actually really fun. And I also think it's one of the ways 
that we can get more people into birding. So these are the two apps that I use right here. This is uh, the Merlin app. Um, let me see if I can make that brighter. This is the Merlin app, and it's really useful for helping identify stuff. Oh, one cool thing I should mention is a lot of the North American birds that are migratory are moving down here. I, I saw Swainson's thrush in Ecuador, and I've been seeing them in Costa Rica now. Um, these, on, on the other hand, are not migratory. <laughs> uh, here was another amazing uh, peak nature journaling moment. So that is a keel-billed toucan. Um, and it was actually eating a hummingbird. So I had just been reading about how vicious toucans can be. And many people don't know this and assume they're just frugivores, peaceful frugivores, but they actually uh, are nest raiders. And if another bird gets too close, they will snatch them up and eat them. This might have been a nestling. I didn't get a very good view of the hummingbird in its mouth. Um, the guide who was looking through the telescope thought it was a hermit, which is an amazing hummingbird. Um, you can see here, as usual, I have these sort of sidebar of quick notes. This is actually um, done later from photo reference. This is the quick sketch I got in the field showing the, the hummingbird and showing that's me with my eyeballs popping out. That's what I actually looked like when I saw a toucan eating a, a hummingbird. And this was, the, this was a, a new species for me. Um, they have three toucan species here where I just came from, they also had three. I think at this point in my travels, I've seen this year, seen at least five toucan species. So that's pretty cool. And I nature journaled all of them. Um, here is this cool bridge that is here. So you can see I do these quick sketches. Here is a uh, stages, this really cool um, solanaceous. Uh, so tomato family epiphyte, it's a parasitic plant, but it's in the tomato family, um, a really cool trogon dart frog. So I'm going to show you more dart frogs in a second, but um, those were amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, here's another North American migrant, the black and white warbler. This is the other species of toucan, the yellow throated, also called chestnut mandibled. This one has a wider range, and I saw this one in Ecuador already on this trip. Um, this was a new tanager for me, the golden hooded tanager. Super, oh no, someone's saying that I froze up. Did I freeze up? Please let me know um, if I froze up on the platform, whatever platform you're watching on, am I frozen? Um, please post a comment so I know if, how the sound is. I know that there might be like some background noise. I'm in a, you know, crazy, uh, I'm in a library at a science research station and there's a, dehumidifier and a air conditioner running so that everything doesn't just turn into mushrooms here. Please let me know if I'm frozen for anyone else. James Coleman is here. Hi, James. Oh, okay. Oh, Rebel Maven is here. Hi, Rebel Maven. Hi, Jean. Hi, Marie. Hi, Tiffany. Um, all right. Glad I'm not frozen for everybody. Um, okay. Let me see if I can get, sorry that the, I, I don't have really studio conditions here. I'm doing my best. Um, I'm gonna just hold it again. I think that was working better. Um, the auto, you know, these cameras are not the, the best, but okay, the um, exposure is not really great. Cindy is here too. Okay, so anyways, um, this was a night I was with photographers. So this was really challenging nature journaling for me. This is what some of the photographers look like with really crazy setups for photography, including this guy that almost looked like a Ghostbuster or a cyborg. Um, I drew, I do a sketch of him and then drew him in later. Um, this was a crazy moth. I added the color later and it came out, didn't come out quite right. Uh, lots of cool, uh, we saw a really weird arboreal opossum and these giant uh, centipedes, lots of frogs. Um, everybody in the everybody else in the group had been bit by bullet ants before. So there's a saying that if you look at the people that you spend time with, you can predict your future. So based on that saying, I will probably be bitten by a bullet ant at some point um, in the near future. This was an amazing moth. It was very big, at least this long, and its wings had not emerged yet, and it was crawling around. Oh, I might be able to just show you the. Um, 
on my phone, since I'm not using my phone for this, check out this crazy moth crawling on the ground. Look at the way it's crawling there. Passion going on because I'm with a bunch of crazy photographers. So nature journaling on a night hike looking for, look at how big that thing is when it goes into her hand. Um, so I met some really cool people. Some of them worked at the Smithsonian. Some of them worked for the Baltimore Aquarium. There's people here from several um, uh, documentary production teams. But this was an amazing thing to see. And then um, I, I still need to work on the colors on this more. But this was an eyelash viper. And that was absolutely amazing. I've always heard about those, but never actually seen one. I can show you the photo here. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, um, you'll see stuff a little bit bigger and i already posted this this was just taken with my phone but look at that amazing snake so what i'm going to do now and this is what i call nature journal homework is i get a lot of this done in the field especially in this kind of challenging situation it's at night time i'm with people who are moving very quickly i'm getting bitten by um, all kinds of mosquitoes and stuff this guy was getting bitten by all kinds of ants uh, there's a lot going on. It's happening very fast. So what I do is I get in as much sketches as I can, like this really cool dung beetle, this anolis. I got this sketch of the eyelash viper. The, the shape isn't really quite right, um, but I got it in there. I got this uh, title and stuff. And then I do take some photos and then I can come back. And one trick that I will share with you is I use something really pale, such as this Tombow pin. This Tombow pin is a very pale color. You can see it right here. And what I do is I create these spaces and leave them blank, or I'll even make space for a title. So if I hadn't written in this title right away, I would have just used this Tombow pin and made sort of the shape of where the letters are gonna go. And then I know once I get back from the field, I can fill that in. So this is where self-awareness is really important though in nature journaling because some of us are not actually good at doing homework. Um, some of us also know that uh, we'll be more interested in whatever's going on outside the next day. And you might not ever have a boring, slow moment to go back and do this homework. So don't leave too many open spaces. Like I have spaces still from way back, um, like a couple weeks ago in Ecuador on a night hike. Now, look, I never filled in these. I said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to draw on all the stuff from photos that I saw during the night hike. And look, this was October um, 14th, and I still have not filled that in. So just be conscious and be self-aware not to keep, give yourself homework if you're not going to do it. Here you can see I was surprised again. We saw two more snake species after the eyelash viper. And then we saw one of the queens of the rainforest, the Terciopello, both rops Asper. This snake right here was almost two meters long, this individual. And this is the snake responsible for more snake bite fatalities in Central and, so and South America too, I believe, than any other species. We saw right next to this play, but nobody plays on the swings, so it's probably fine. But one thing to point out, despite its repetition, repetition for being aggressive and going after people, as soon as we got there, um, it left. I did, however, set my alarm for 4 a.m. the next day, and I went back to the same spot because I wanted to get a better sketch in than that first one. I approached really slowly, and it was coiled up there again, the same individual. Uh, I approached really slowly, and I barely shined my light on it. And I only had four minutes to do this nature journaling that you see here. Um, I got in this, 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 and this, these sketches, these, uh, these notes right here. And then it, went, um, it took off and went back into the hole to hide. So even though I approached very slowly and barely shined my light on it, this snake didn't want to have anything to do with me and went and hit. This thing is, uh, you know, longer than I am tall. Next, uh, while I had a moment, the mosquitoes were biting me and it was four in the morning, but I added the color. So this color was not done in four minutes. That wouldn't be possible. Um, and then I used words. Words are really good here for stories. Um, woke up early to come back and look for terciopelo. Terciopelo is the Spanish name for this, at least in Costa Rica. It's called X in 
Ecuador. As soon as I got over there, it was in the same spot the, by the playground, waiting out in the open. Unfortunately, it did not stay for long, and even though I did not get very close, it moved and went into the same hole under the tree. One of the main things that stood out visually from a distance was the pale side of its head, and I tried to, to draw that. So this, uh, this kind of writing can really summarize something that happens. So sometimes with nature journaling, we do this sort of portrait thing where almost all we have are these sort of por portrait things like that. Um, that is, and then the name of the species, that is fine. That's sort of like um, the, you know, uh, nature diary of an Edwardian lady and that's, that's fine. But a lot of times with a story like this and, and sketches that maybe show movement, um, you can capture a lot more information about an event and words are really good for this. Uh, that a little bit later, I almost said the next day, later at 5.50 a.m., I went to look for this um, special bird. Let me find it on Merlin to show you that I heard was going to be in this location. Come on, photos. Um, it's going to be here. See that bird right there? This was the bird that I wanted to see, and someone told me it could be in this area. So I went to that area at a little bit before six in the morning, um, saw a lot of other cool birds that I did not nature journal, but I did capture in my pages in other ways. Um, and I did get a sketch. I finally did see the long-tailed tyrant, uh, which was really cool. Uh, a lot more nature journaling pages. I'm not gonna share all of them right now. And then today, this was uh, really, really, uh, uh, really awesome. I did some nature journaling with waterproof uh, paper, which I will show you. Let me put the tripod. Sorry, it's a little bit shaky. I don't have a much better of a setup. This is uh, my Write in the Rain journal, which you've probably seen. Um, and this is what I use when it's uh, raining. This was from the cloud forest in Ecuador where the um, Indian eagle was. And this is from today. These are those great green macaws. You can see some cool plants and birds, a, a monkey drawing. Monkeys are my growth edge. It was also moving and eating fruit, so monkeys are not easy to draw. Uh, this was a mot mot, which is a really cool bird. This one's the Rufus mot mot, a cool uh, rodent, and that's it. And then it was dry enough for me to use my regular pages, and I got this really awesome session in with poison dart frogs. Um, check out some of the upcoming posts on my Instagram about this, but. Um, this was a, you know, a peak nature journaling moment for me. Not easy at all. This is, these are challenging shapes to draw. It was 100% humidity. There was clouds of mosquitoes biting me. Um, and uh, it was very hot and humid. So um, I managed to get this in. Um, these were, there were multiples of these. So I nature journaled multiple individuals and tried to get the um, differences in their patterns. Uh, which was really fun. And just a little bit later, another Bothrops Asper, another Teresiopello. So this one was a baby right next to the path, super camouflage. Um, but I spent about 20 minutes. I really wanted to get a sketch. Here you can see relatively where it was. So here's this, um, there's these concrete paths here at La Selva Biological Station. Um, and this is where people were walking by. And they pointed to me where the baby was in relationship to the person was even smaller. This is like the actual size of it right here. It would fit in my hand here. Same species as that other big two meter long one, much smaller, a baby. And uh, um, this is supposed to the actual size. And this was a peak nature journaling moment for me. There was two cans flying around and there was um, uh, spider monkeys in the trees. There was clouds of mosquitoes biting me. And uh, it was really hard to focus and do this watercolor, but uh, I managed to concentrate and uh, get it in. Uh, very, very uh, powerful experience. And to sum it up, what I did is I, I wrote words to describe the experience because it's really easy to just do an animal drawing and leave it at that. But this, these words right here are going to um, describe it a lot better. I think I'm gonna put the camera over. So I'll read to you what I wrote there. And I highly recommend using some creative, creative nonfiction in your nature journaling. Writing is a really powerful tool for telling stories and capturing information. So um, this is what I wrote after I drew 
that um, Teresio Pelo. So maybe I can read it and hold it here. Um, actually, no, I can't. That was such an epic and extreme session with hundreds of mosquitoes biting me, spider monkeys, toucans, and trogans in the trees, hot and humid as my butt crack, and trying to water the color of eight both drops on the side of the trail with its challenging combo of color pattern and 3D form. I can hear monkey diarrhea splattering down through all four layers of canopy and an aura pendulum uh, bending sound behind me. A long-billed hermit flew by while I was finalizing the watercolor and a species of mosquito almost as big as the hummingbird continued to take my blood while others die trying, many of which are still festooned on my forehead. It is almost lunch and I slept four hours last night, but I could do anything right now, even though there are three mosquitoes biting my left eyelid and more following me than people follow me on. So a little bit silly and kind of, you know, mostly intended for myself, but these things that we write in our nature journals oftentimes can capture a lot of the stuff that ends up being more meaningful um, from a trip or an experience. So this is, this is one of the things that nature journaling can, can take from regular journaling. So in regular journaling, like in diaries, this is one of the, the main focuses. And nature journalers can use that too, because a lot of times if you're going back and reading these things later, this is the kind of thing that might be more meaningful you meaningful to you than just a sketch of a, if all you see is a sketch of a snake five years later um, that's cool but having a little bit of uh, like a paragraph of written words about the experience um, can be uh, you know even more better so thanks everybody for joining in and i just want to say again um, for thanks again for all the people who have been helping um, helping me out with the lost passport situation. Um, this is my last day of the weekend where I kind of just have to wait and I can't really do anything. I've done all the steps that I can to like proceed with this and have figured out a way to get enough uh, enough money to be able to pay for the bus a bus uh, get on the public bus to go back to San Jose. Um, someone even from my Instagram and YouTube followers. Uh, offer to help me out with um, a hostel in San Jose. People have been, have sent me money. If you want to help me out, you can just uh, send me anything. Anything will help on PayPal. Marley, I'm Marley339 at gmail.com. Um, thanks so much for all the people who have already helped. You're awesome. Um, and even if you don't help, you can share my videos or do anything like that. Because the most important thing for me is, um, you know, not relaxing because I'm not on vacation. Um, but the most important thing for me is to continue this work. So one thing I wanted to share is that in two days that I've been here at the science field station, I probably introduced um, informally, but influentially, I've probably introduced uh, over 50 people to the concept of nature journaling. There was just a group of students here, um, a couple hundred students, and I had one-on-one uh, -on -one interactions with over um, 20 of them and showed them uh, my nature journaling showed them my Instagram uh, where I teach nature journaling. My most recent video on Instagram is in Spanish. I don't know if you noticed that. If you follow me on Instagram and you're an English speaker, you might have noticed that I'm having a lot more stuff in Spanish. These college students noticed that. One of them is already starting to teach a journal during his um, the outing with his class here. Um, multiple people that work here have been asking about it. Other scientists who are doing research here have been asking about it. And the thing about nature journaling is that whether you want to be a, a teacher or not, if you're standing there doing this, people are going to come up to you and start asking you questions. As soon as they start asking you questions and looking at your nature journal pages, you're having a, a, a teaching effect. So um, being here has been, uh, you know, this is one of the things I think that science field stations are going to be a really great place for nature journaling. Um, you know, look at the library around me. I haven't looked for any of the nature journaling books such as john muir law's book or anything like that but i could probably guarantee you that there are no nature journaling books in this um this library and this library has a lot of stuff about tropical ecology jaguars birds mushrooms all kinds of stuff and just imagine if there were some nature journaling books in here or some other nature journaling resources or just imagine if we could have a group of nature journalers at a location like this introducing more people. These are young people who are going to be spending a career in science, a lot of them in conservation related fields. If we can share nature journaling as a tool with those people, 
and also as a tool for education, just imagine the impact that we can have. So I've been, I've stayed at, um, I think three science field stations and hopefully this uh, loss of my passport and, and money pouch isn't going to prevent me from going to the other two that I have planned for um, Costa Rica. But I, you can be sure that you know, I'll do whatever it takes to continue doing this work. And I have big plans and big ideas for, um, for next year and for the future for spreading nature journaling at places like this, because I think um, we can have a bigger impact and we can also start to use nature journaling in applied ways. It's great to have nature journaling as a hobby, it helps us connect with nature and live a, a better life. And even if we do it as a hobby, we can have an impact. But just imagine if we had more researchers, um, concert, conservation workers, educators, um, scientists using nature journaling in applied ways and communicators, I think we could have a really big impact. Um, so thanks everybody um, for, for joining in. Um, sorry, I couldn't keep up with the comments here. Um, if you've sent me any messages on other platforms, I'm a little bit behind as well. Um, so much stuff has been going on. So if I don't get back to you, um, it's not personal. Um, Someone's sending me a bunch of stuff about um, the embassy. Yeah, I know about the embassy. I'm I, I'm all lined up for that. Um, I didn't lose my my cell phone, and it could definitely be a lot worse. Um, this is a great idea, Cindy. I don't have this. Um, it is a really good idea. What I usually just do is I use my Instagram, and there's a way you can share uh, your QR code on there, and then people can just scan that. And that works good with um, the younger generations, especially, but love the idea of having hard. Um, thank you. Thanks, Marie, for the kind words and everything. All right. Thanks, everybody. And also, if you want to see more nature journaling in Yasuni National Park, which is the most biodiverse place in the world, according to a lot of people, um, that's in Ecuador. I have like four more videos that are all going to be coming out over the next, um, you know, the next couple of weeks. So just make sure you have the notifications um on 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 the youtube and you'll know when these videos are coming out and then after that uh, some costa rica ones will probably come out so stay tuned those are going to be really fun videos um thank you all for all your support um you're all awesome um and especially thanks to all my patreon patrons for supporting the show all right everybody i'm going to go back out and nature journal oh i forgot to mention that i've been seeing tons of these um these are in the pig family there these are a type of peccary I think there's there might be two species here um and i've been seeing tons of these uh lots of tracks lots of monkeys cro uh, not crocodiles but caimans uh, multiple species of fish um multiple 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 species of snakes um tons of frogs and hoping to see a lot more tonight three three two three toucan species giant macaws whole ton of biodiversity here and hope i'll be leading um, a group of lucky nature journalers here next year. So stay tuned for that. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Cindy, Jean, uh, Mary, Tiffany, um, et cetera, et cetera. You're all awesome. Bye.